Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's brief preparatory episode for I managed to get my hands upon this absolute 1998 beauty a Gericom laptop as fine and as light as cast iron and featuring here a hard disk with a little lever that can be like pulled out just like that akin to the Terminator's eye or something and this absolutely adorable little friend here is a running the amazing the one and only Windows 98 and I certainly itch to review it I certainly itch to look around through it we see here a microsoft outlook icon as an indicator that we're having some good old proper office and definitely you and i together shall do so but before we venture into the pleasure we should also give things a thought things that can go wrong what happens if this machine stops booting for any reason whatsoever yeah, I'll tell you what, then I really have an issue and I would really have to reinstall it. And you can imagine what an amazing pleasure that is going to be with an ancient laptop, non-standard as they came, in, an, in a model that I do not even know. I know it's a Gericom, I don't know which Gericom, I know it has a Pentium with 166 megahertz, Pentium 1. I know it has 32 megabytes of RAM. I know it has 2 gigabytes of disk. I know it has 800 times 600 as a resolution, despite it being a big screen. So it's not even 1024 times 768. But more than that, I do not even know. So I shall not risk things. And instead of, yeah, playing and then crying, I shall be shutting down this beauty and taking out its hard disk and making an image out of it as a civilized adult but at least by way of a little pleasure let us see windows 98 shutting down and now let us proceed to the operation of today's endeavor. Getting out this. Huh? Huh? Ooh, have to be gentle. This. <laughs> oh my god. And then working on it, ladies and gentlemen. So here I am. backing up the Garycom's hard drive. It seems to be a pretty normal IDE drive. Not uncommon for the time, with a size of around two gigabyte. And what is sort of extremely charming is that values for cylinders, heads and sectors are remarked upon it in case you need to set these for the specific operating system. The operation is undertaken under my main Linux machine with a simple dd command where I am taking things from the dev sdb device and dumping them onto a Windows 98 Gericom image file. And as you can see, we are about half through. Now that is undertaken via a toy, which my dear friend Ivan once upon a time gave me, which is this little gadget here that is having ports for SATA here laptop IDE as well as normal IDE 
and which really thereby allows to connect such hard drives as if they were USB devices, which are right now turns out to be just what I need. For I had a couple of other ideas, but each of them got foiled in turn in the most ridiculous way. For instance, I was considering to simply take out this IDE drive and put it into another old laptop of mine and simply start the machine there via USB or CD or something and just, you know, copy the contents of the hard drive. Yeah, or so you think. For if you look at my finger, this is a rather fat drive. As you can guess, it wouldn't fit there. So that plan was foiled. Another idea I was having was why not boot the Gericom machine from CD and then do things on itself. My plan was to boot Slita's 3.0 low RAM a Slita's Linux variant, which allegedly is able to boot down to something with 9 megabyte RAM. So the 32 megabyte RAM of the Gericom should be more than enough to do so. And while I now have a good CD with which I can play Frisbee or something, that plan was foiled too because the Gericom wouldn't be booting for ROM CD. Now, there might be a way to cheat it into doing so, but let us say here it is a question of return on investment and I do not feel very much that this is going to be easier than anything else. The way to cheat it into any way booting the CD-ROM would be to find a floppy image, and such exist, of CD booters. Basically, some sort of little program that will boot first into the floppy, as this is the only thing the machine can boot into, besides drive C, and then force it from there to boot the CD-ROM. So, that would have been a venue but really, Vanyu made things a lot easier. And then, and I may show you that later on, this warped and twisted thing is its frame. It basically pulled out by that little lever here from the laptop in some sort of perfect enclosure and it was in no way obvious how from this weird thing with the strange connector the disk really can be taken out. At first I thought it is some sort of custom disk and did not even think that I can easily draw an image from it with any device like that. And only when I googled its model number, only then did I realize, okay, MK210 for MAVs exist and they are normal IDE drives. So that was the quite interesting sum of efforts to get an image and the image we nearly have here. And as I am going to be drawing the image on the one hand, in the reverse, I intend to already place some useful DOS programs on it in order to have them at the ready in the Gericom and in order to avoid having to transfer them by hand or by floppy disk later on. The disk is now back in the frame and this is what the whole thing looks like. I very much hope that my little procedure of securing it has not in some
fashion damaged it. Okay. And I inserted it now into the Gericom machine. Let's place the Gericom machine under electricity. Turning the Gericom machine towards us. And now comes the moment of truth. Will we or will we not boot again? into windows oh gosh i connected the t rather than the gericom machine give me a second all right now really the gericom machine not the tea cooker okay uh, uh can i maybe get out here say anything no everything is nicely done i'll just let it check its memory doesn't take long anyway and we're hearing the familiar sound of the test for the floppy bios invitation we will ignore and windows 98 has begun booting let's see whether it will just crash midway or whether it will continue to show the desktop And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. The securing of the hard disk image appears to have been successful. And that's it for today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for having joined. Please do come again as we shall be reviewing this in more detail. Thank you for watching. See you soon and goodbye.